welcome to Soul Fire Wisdom with Kate Olson. As an evolving spirit and change adventure navigator, it is Kate's mission to empower and guide you on your path and inspire your truest passions. She will encourage you to share your gifts, speak your truth, and ignite your inner wisdom and purpose. She hopes to do so with a little humor and grace and her own soul fire passion. Kate talks with amazing guests who have embraced the pursuit and are fanning the flames of their own passion, purpose, and soul fire wisdom. Now here's your host, Kate. Good afternoon. So uh, welcome to Soul Fire Wisdom and Totally Awesome, Try Something New and Talk About It Tuesday. So what I tried this week uh, was uh, I was on a, a little uh, trip taking care of some things in Seattle, actually, and uh I forgot my all of my vitamins and uh, green drink and collagen and everything. I left it in a bag on the counter. So I had to try to uh, replace that. And I found um, these little tablets of amazing greens, actually. And they're, they come in... Uh, in a little tube about this big and there's uh, a whole week in there, seven little tablets or they're not little tablets. They're actually pretty big. And you put that uh, in some water and let it dissolve. And it's like an Alka-Seltzer, it dissolves. And the, the one that I got was flavored uh, strawberry lemonade. And uh, in, you just put it in about eight ounces of water and it dissolves beautifully. And so I am glad to say that uh, that worked great. And I actually liked it better than the powder that you mix up. So thumbs up for Amazing Greens tablets. So today our topic is supposed to be um, pre uh, suicide prevention awareness. And my guest is supposed to be Frank King. But unfortunately, uh, Frank has not shown up yet. I don't know if he's having trouble getting on and maybe he will show up or I've tried messaging him and he isn't, he hasn't responded. So I'm hoping that something hasn't happened or he's not uh, waylaid by uh, being evacuated again or something. He was evacuated by the um, wildfires and uh, had just gotten back home. And anyway, we were going to talk to him about that very important topic. And, uh, you know, I'm sorry that he's not here. But I'm going to talk about that topic anyway, as best I can. Um, if anyone is watching live, uh, go ahead and respond because uh, you might help me out from uh, doing a solo narrative here. I'll try to um, notice the comments. Anyway, uh, September was... Uh, Suicide Prevention Awareness Month and with everything else going on, the coronavirus, the wildfires, politics, uh, it didn't get much mention. But uh, during this time, during the pandemic, there's been actually been an uptick in, uh, you know, mental health issues of uh, depression, uh, anxiety, and suicide as well. So we need to talk about it. 
So um, <laughs> we have a comment that it is a very important topic and that is definitely true. Um, it's important to realize that uh, your friends that are going through depression and anxiety aren't always going to reach out and say, you know, that something's wrong. And you may have said, well, you know, whatever is going on with you, just let me know. But especially with depression, when people are in the depths of that, just, you know, getting up in the morning or functioning at all can be difficult. So um, it's rare when somebody that's going through that can actually reach out and say, hey, I need some help. Um, and that's why by the time uh, you do hear that someone is having a problem, it's usually at an extreme level, like they are threatening, um, harming themselves or really saying things that uh, reflect despair because that's where they're at. So do take it seriously. And if you have friends that are prone to um, depression, anxiety, or have been suicidal, have expressed suicidal ideation, um, reach out, reach out and ask them if they're okay. Ask them how they're doing during uh, the pandemic or if they're having other, you know, issues, you know, just ask, say, you know, it's hard on everybody now. How are you doing? And then sometimes they will speak up, but realize that it is really hard when you're going through that. You're not, um, you're not thinking that anyone can help you. So it's hard to uh, reach out. Yes, um, people that have a, have a propensity toward addiction, um, Yes, they, they do experience um, a lot of times depression and anxiety and uh, experience suicidal um, thoughts, probably more than the, the general population. And that's Dottie just brought that up because she works with with um, that population of people. So <laughs> I really wish Frank were here because, um, you know, he's, he's an expert in this. He does um, training and he's, he, he can give you uh, information from the perspective because he's gone through it himself. He's experienced the impression I mean, excuse me, the depression and uh, even had the suicide attempts. And uh, then he decided to work with other people. And because of his background as a writer for The Tonight Show, he um, went into comedy himself. And uh, I'm sure that uh, this year is giving him a lot of uh, material for future <laughs> comedy shows because he's really um, been in the, you know, the midst of everything. When the pandemic started, he took off to do uh, shows on a cruise, cruise ship that was leaving from China so he was actually strand, one of the people that was stranded on those cruise ships in the very beginning of the pandemic. And now just recently he and, and his wife were evacuated in those wildfires. And I'm sure a lot of those people, especially the people that, you know, lost everything, but even just the people that went through 
that experience of being evacuated. I'm sure they've uh, experienced a lot of stress and and that can be really hard to deal with, especially when it's stress upon stress. Yes, and that's true of all people that are having mental health issues. Um, and Dottie points out that people have a fear of approaching uh, people that are dealing with addiction. Uh, and, and I know that's true myself because I grew up um, with an alcoholic father and I remember people pretending in the beginning at least that, you know, nothing was wrong and fearful that if they do say anything, it'll make the situation worse rather than better. Yeah, and the same is true of people with mental health issues. Um, you know, you're kind of wanting to um, ignore the elephant in the room, but it's either there's two fears actually in that you'll make the situation worse or you'll bring up something that you don't know how to deal with, but you don't have to necessarily deal with it. Um, just letting the person know that you're there and being able to help them connect with resources is is important because if you you know if you don't know what to do you can at least connect them with someone who does and everybody isn't expected to be an expert but everybody can help by letting people know that you're there and you understand that they're going through something and, you know, that you want to help them. So um, it, it's really hard on um, friends and family members when they do have someone that uh, is either has a history of going through um, depression or anxiety or suicidal episodes. And then especially so if you've had someone in your family that, or friends that has actually um, committed suicide. It's um, easy to think that you could have and should have done something about it. And after the fact, um, it isn't, yeah, it isn't um, something that, it's something that person, a course of action that person chose to take the only time that we can do anything about it, and it is never our fault, um, but is beforehand being aware of it and getting that person help. Um, but afterward, when you're thinking, oh, it was my fault, I didn't do what that person needed, that is pretty much, you know, not something that you should feel guilty about. The best thing to do is to talk about it, to keep it, um, you know, something that shouldn't be hush hush, that we should discuss. Because the more we know about it, the more we can do about it. Um, even the pe person that is suicidal, they oftentimes think that, um, you know, there's something weird about them and that it's something that can't be resolved. Um, you know, they feel like maybe they're broken and don't function, you know, as well as other people. 
And that is, they may not be functioning well at that moment, but that it's not something that can't be remedied and that they can't learn to deal with and function. And as um, when I, I've had Frank on before and what he said was he he was surprised to learn that he could be happy and function well, but he um, he is happy and he is able to function. And not only that, but able to help other people because he understands the you know the issues, the problems, the course that. Um, that it takes and what it takes to, um, you know, get yourself back on track. So, um, so I wish you were here <laughs> or that I knew what, um, what happened with him. Um, yeah, I still haven't gotten a response. So he either just forgot it or uh, something happened and hopefully we can do it at another time. Uh, myself, I, I haven't uh, experienced that kind of depression, but my son has, um, has experienced it and um, quite young, actually. Um, he was actually suicidal when he was nine years old. And it, it's an extreme um, uh, to go through that as a parent is very difficult. But, you know, I'll have to say to go through it as a child, I know is very difficult. But that's a very common age for children to be suicidal between um, seven and 13 is actually a very common time when uh, children experience that. And it is possible, I'll say, to work through it um, with your child. Uh, and, you know, you, you can reach out for help and there are a lot of resources. So, um, you know, I, I went through that and I know, um, know how hard it is to hear as a parent that your ch child is having feelings that are that extreme, no matter what it is that's causing them. With him, it was situations at school and you don't think your child is, you know, dealing with uh, complex issues, but they really can be. And uh, so it can be a lifelong uh, problem for some people, but uh, dealing with it is something that can be managed. So um, just don't be afraid to ask questions. Try to find out as much information as you can about the topic uh, so that you can um, so that you can know the signs to look for. Some of those signs are if someone is withdrawing uh, from social contact, uh, you know, seems, not to be functioning in their life uh, is, you know, not meeting the normal daily obligations that they have, maybe sleeping a lot, um, or not, not all people, um, some people seem to be functioning perfectly well, uh, but they can still be depressed. So it's still good to ask, even if somebody, if somebody's been through a lot, if they've had a recent loss, um, or just if you notice uh, 
a sudden change in their behaviors. So I'm going to keep this rather short because without a guess, um, it's, um, you know, I'm not an expert on the topic. Um, I've had clients who were suicidal and just, I know personally that just um, reaching out and being aware and letting them know that you care and giving them resources, um, tools to deal with the things that they think can't be dealt with um, is effective in helping and I've had, you know, clients tell me that, you know, that usually they don't tell me in the beginning that they're feeling suicidal and I only find it out later. And then they tell me that, you know, I'm glad you, um, you know, gave me these tools to work with that because I was actually feeling this way when I came and sometimes I'm a little surprised, <laughs> but other times if I suspect that they might be having those uh, feelings, I try to give as many tools as I can. And, uh, you know, it works. So don't be afraid to reach out and talk to people and let them know you're concerned. So next week, um, my, my guest that I was expect, oh, okay. My guest that I will be having on the show next week is um, Brett Dupree. And he's also a podcast host. Um, he uh, hosts a Joyous Expansion. And I noticed him because he's on my Instagram and I noticed these posts that I thought, wow, <laughs> um, he uh, really uh, believes in a lot of the same things that I do. And uh, so I looked more carefully at his posts or I mean at his profile and then I listened to his podcast and I thought, wow, I think I want to have this guy on and find out more about him. So next week, my guest will be Brett Dupree. And um, he also believe his podcast is very spontaneous. And so I guess this one's a good uh, practice for that. Um, and so I'll be trying to keep up with his spontaneity. And so I think you'll enjoy that prod podcast. So be sure to tune in next week, which is um, the 6th. It'll be October 6th at 3 uh, p.m. Pacific time. And I'll be looking forward to it. And I hope you'll join us. So I'm just going to say... Bye for now, and hopefully I'll find out what happened to Frank. Thank you for listening to Soul Fire Wisdom with Kay Olson. We hope you enjoyed the show. If we made you laugh, brightened your day, or sparked a new thought, we have succeeded in our mission. Join us next time when we'll share more secrets and truths and all the magic of transformation that is the journey to soul fire wisdom. Always remember, be fierce in the pursuit of what sets your soul on fire.